Let's begin. Hey there, scary story fanatics. Welcome back to Cleaving Thought from Bone with your host, Sociopathic. Well there, Phoenix, are you ready for tonight's video? I sure am ready. Um, where'd she go? Uh, well, while I look for my minion and try to remember to hold on to what you hold dear, reinforced by tonight's terror tale, a dreadful bit that Doughboy420 likes to call the Beast of Bridevale Creek. My life changed in the summer of 2012 while on a family trip to Yosemite National Park. It was mid-July and the humid summer air, mixed with the hour or so of hiking, left me drenched in sweat and exhausted. So, after I helped my parents set up camp at Bridevale Creek, I decided to take a break at the shore of the creek and take in the scenery while Dad cooked up a late lunch on our little portable grill we had brought along. As Dad flipped burgers and Mom sat talking to my little sister Amber, I sat down on a large rock at the shore and took in the view of the beautiful Bride Vale Falls. It's pretty amazing how nature can be so beautiful and oftentimes terrifying. It wasn't too long before I witnessed my first sense of terrifying awe and wonder when I noticed some movement in the bushes on the far end of the creek, just a dozen or so yards away from me. I watched as the bushes parted, and a large, brown, furry creature made its way out onto the opposite shore of the creek from me. I quickly realized what it was. It was a pretty large bear. I almost jumped up and ran back to camp, but instead... I decided to watch it for a moment. The bear made his way to the water to get a drink and probably tried to catch some fish for his own late lunch. I watched in awe as the creature dipped its head down and lapped up some water. It was scary, but also pretty amazing. I watched him for a minute or so as he calmly lapped up the water, and then something weird happened. The bear's head shot up and quickly turned to look upstream, opposite of where I was. He froze for a moment, staring up the rapids towards the falls. He was obviously spooked by something, but I couldn't see what he had saw. The bear just stood there, absolutely still, staring off into the distance before turning tail and booking it back into the cover of the forest as fast as he could. What the hell could have scared an animal that big, to the point that the thing was frozen in terror? It was at that time that I started to get this weird feeling, kind of like I was being watched. It wasn't like that familiar feeling of someone being in the same room as you. It was more like someone, or something, was intensely staring me down like eyes piercing into my soul with an evil intention. Like I had trespassed onto someone else's property and they wanted me gone by any means necessary. Something was telling me that I shouldn't be here. So I got up and made my way back to camp. Hey bud, you alright? Dad asked. He could obviously see that I was a bit perturbed. Um, yeah, I just saw a bear down by the creek, I replied. Yep, they're all over the place around here. Don't worry, though, as long as you don't leave food around and hang it up in a bear bag at night. We should be fine. And if worse comes to worse, I brought my gun, Dad told me, trying to put me at ease. But it wasn't the bear that had me on edge. It was 
Whatever unseen thing that had scared the bear off that made me uneasy. For the time being, I tried to shrug it off, but it still lingered in the back of my mind. The rest of that day passed pretty uneventful. We ate our burgers and then hiked the surrounding area a bit more, taking in the scenery and enjoying the beauty of the nature around us. After the excitement of the day and night had fallen, we all went in for the night, the four of us settling in in our nice three-room tent that Dad had brought just for this occasion. I later awoke in the middle of the night because I had to piss like a racehorse. I threw on my shoes, grabbed the flashlight out of the tent pocket, and made my way outside to take a leak. I made it to the edge of the forest and relieved myself, but as I was taking care of my business, I began hearing rustling in the bushes. The movement wasn't centered in a single area, but instead, it happened all around me, in several places just beyond the forest's edge. I shined the flashlight into the woods to try and find the source of the noise, fearing that it was a pack of coyotes or something, and hoping that maybe the light would scare off whatever it was. I didn't even finish relieving myself when I heard the loud snap of a tree branch from directly behind me. I stopped mid-piss and spun around to see what had made the sound and found myself nearly face to face with a large, slender figure. The thing was very tall and very thin. It had no arms that I could see, only a thin torso and two long, spindly legs. It was then in the light of my flashlight that I finally realized what it was. It was a tall, wood carving of some sort. A carving of some unknown creature that resembled a Native American totem of some kind. I was relieved for the moment, but then a new sinking feeling of fear quickly washed over me. This thing wasn't here before, so what had put it here? Suddenly, the large wooden totem lurched forward, and the mouth of the thing opened wide to reveal a dark hole of a mouth. I screamed in absolute horror as the wooden beast wrapped its splintery lips around my face. I awoke in a cold sweat and looked around at my surroundings, fearing that I was in the stomach of that beast. But I quickly realized that I was in the back of my tent with the early morning light flickering the shadows of the canopy above onto me. It was just a dream. The next thing I realized was my bladder that was about to burst. And the dream probably started because my brain was telling me, Hey dummy, you have to pee. I threw on my shoes and ran outside to take a leak at the forest's edge. But just as I was finishing my business, I again heard that familiar loud snap of a branch behind me. I froze for a moment and my eyes widened in fear. I turned around slowly, fully expecting to see the same slender, wooden stick creature that I had dreamt about the night before, but I soon sighed in relief when I saw that it was just my father pulling down the bear bag from the tree so that he could start frying up our breakfast. Hey, I heard my mother say, your sister wants to go play by the creek. You think you can keep an eye on her while I help your dad with breakfast? She asked. Ugh, fine, I said, unenthusiastically. I hated always having to babysit my sister, no matter what it was. The playground, trick-or-treating on Halloween, I was always stuck watching her. I don't know why I expected this family trip to be any different. Amber quickly grabbed a hold of my arm and dragged me down the short trail to the creek. After we arrived, I sat down on the same large rock that I had found the day before, while Amber took off her shoes and sat down on the smaller rock beside me. <laughs> it's cold, she said, as she began kicking her feet into the water. For a few minutes, we sat there at the edge of the creek. I sat there in silence, just enjoying nature, and Amber kicked her feet in the water while humming a cheerful tune to herself. Then, 
she suddenly went quiet, and her feet stopped kicking. I thought this was a bit weird, so I looked over at her to see her staring blankly across the creek. She just sat there, not even blinking, and stared intently toward the forest across the creek. Amber? I said, but I got no reply. Hey, are you okay? I asked, but still nothing. She just continued to stare blankly across the creek. Hey, Amber, are you all right? I asked again, shaking her a bit, but she just continued to ignore my existence and stared across the creek. I then looked across the creek to the area that she was fixated upon. At first, I didn't notice anything, but then my eye caught sight of something. There was something that looked like it was peeking out at us from behind some bushes at the tree line. I couldn't make out what it was, just that it was a pale white color, and it appeared to be watching us. As I stared at it as well, I got the same sinking feeling that I did the previous day, the same feeling of something staring its piercing eyes into my soul. But then, the thing sunk back into the shadows beyond the trees and disappeared. What are you looking at? Amber asked me. I snapped out of my trance and looked back at her. What was that thing? I asked her. What thing? She asked. The white thing that you were staring at, I replied. What are you talking about? She asked, confused. The thing across the... Never mind, I said. I was scared but confused, but I didn't want to scare her as well. I was worried about her. Did she really not remember seeing that thing, or had she really not seen it? Hey, breakfast is probably about ready. Let's get back to camp, I told her and the two of us headed back to camp. After getting back to camp, I informed my dad of how Amber was acting weird and about the thing that I had seen across the creek, but he just shrugged it off as a deer or something, and that Amber was probably just playing a prank on me. I didn't really argue with him because I figured that was probably the most logical explanation. The rest of the day was pretty fun. We did some more hiking, skipped stones across the creek, and played some games as a family. We had a great time, and it was a lot of fun, and that's how I choose to remember that day. But that night, that's when things took a turn for the worse. At around one or two in the morning, my mom shook me awake. She was in a panic and barely made any sense in my groggy waking state. All I could discern from her panicked speech was that Amber was missing. I quickly threw on my shoes and a hoodie. It was unusually cold for a summer night, but that didn't matter. Together, the three of us searched the surrounding woods for my little sister, yelling her name into the darkness. The only other sounds we heard were the deafening chirping of crickets and the bubbling waters of the creek nearby. The three of us eventually split up to look for Amber. Mom continued searching nearby the camp in case Amber came back. Dad went off down the road that led to camp, and I went off the trail toward the creek. I found myself getting more and more nervous as I approached the creek. I was both afraid of what I would find there, and even more afraid of not finding Amber. I also began to feel guilty that I wasn't the best big brother how I always felt that spending time with her was more of a chore than anything. I continued yelling her name as I approached the creek, the fear inside of me building more and more. I began to feel that familiar feeling that I had gotten twice before, the hateful feeling of being watched by angry eyes. Then, I was suddenly startled by the sound <laughs> of giggling. Amber? I yelled. Amber, where are you? I continued, but there was no reply, only the distant sound of a child's giggling. Hey, where are you? I yelled again. Then, there was only silence, complete 
silence. It was as if the very sound of life had been sucked out of existence. No giggling. No crickets chirping. Not even the sound of the flow of the water in the creek. It was absolute silence. Then my eyes widened as I peered across the creek to see movement between the trees. At first I thought it could have been amber, but then my eyes adjusted to the darkness, and I saw what it really was. There were two figures moving beyond the trees. One was about my height, while the other was smaller, more child-sized. They were pure white and seemed to almost glow. They were almost human-shaped, but something was off about them. They didn't look to have any head or any kind of arms. They looked more like they were just a small torso that topped off two long, spindly legs, and they walked oddly with a weird, flowing, yet jerky gait. The things looked like the totem monster that I had seen in my dream. But this was no dream. These things were real, flesh, and blood creatures. I watched them walk slowly by, and they paid me no mind, as if I weren't even there. I was terrified and frozen in place as I watched them. Watching them gave me the same feeling I had felt before, but this time, it was I that was watching them, instead of them watching me. I knew then that these, these things had taken my little sister, but I couldn't do anything. It was as if I had no control over my body. I could only stand there and watch these creatures in absolute horror as thoughts of amber raced through my head, along with thoughts of trying to rationalize what I was seeing and feeling. But I couldn't rationalize it at all. I could only watch these monsters slowly disappear into the darkness. And then, just as suddenly as they had come into view, they were gone. I looked around, trying to catch sight of them, but there was only darkness. Again, I could hear the crickets in the water passing me by, and that horrified feeling left me as well. They were gone. And so was my little sister. I returned back to my parents and told them what I had seen, but of course, they didn't believe me. They thought I was just seeing things, because I was scared that Amber was missing. We never found her. And we were followed up by a search party of park rangers and volunteers, but they too turned up nothing. Not even a single sign of her at all. It's been years since then. And my parents still hold hope that one day she'll show up at the door and everything will be okay again. But I know what happened. I know those things took her off to God knows where. And I know that I will never forget the horror that I witnessed. And the terror that I felt. I'm sorry, little sister. Well... Unfortunately, I've looked high and low, but she hasn't turned up anywhere. Of course, the toughest part will be trying to explain this to her mother. Maybe I'll get abducted myself before that happens. But as long as I'm still around, make sure to drop in again next weekend. And until then, remember to like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can catch you all again next Saturday. <laughs> Ha 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 ha